is on Mario Warriors and welcome back to another video and uh, I don't actually know what today's video is going to be about it's kind of going to be a bit of everything but uh, yeah starting off the morning again with another stunning sunrise and you may notice I got a new toy by the new video which is a drone I don't quite know why it's taken me so long to actually buy one but man it's so much fun and I wish I'd have bought one ages ago this is like my third time flying it today and I can just see that it's gonna be very addictive. If you have any tips, if anyone, any of you are a, are a drone expert out there, let, let me know in the comments down below. I'd, I'd be interested to hear your tips that you have for me. Um, people always ask why it's so sunny where I am in the UK, and the answer is it's not <laughs> most of the time. Like this morning was the first time it's been sunny in the morning for like two weeks. I just only film on reasonable weather days. So if you look at any of my videos on YouTube, it seems like the UK just has permanent sunshine. <laughs> this is just definitely not the case. Today's multivitamin. Let's move this gift something. So I was sat here eating breakfast and it made me think back to the last ever eating video. In that video, I shared with you guys that I was eating some oysters and the fact that not trying to come off pretentious, but my focus there was, okay, I'm moving away from supplements. I haven't really had supplements minus creatine, magnesium, and whey protein for the past like year to year and a half. Instead, I've been focusing on getting nutrition from whole foods, um, more animal-based, like good organ meats, things like oysters. And I thought this meal was a good example of that. So first of all, we have a few oysters. Now in there, you've got your zinc, you've got your copper, you've also got a bunch of other different minerals, just an incredibly nutrient-dense food. That's kind of like your multi-mineral to some degree. But then you've got eggs, you've got things like choline, you've got vitamin A in there, you've got some omega-3, some other stuff. Again, incredibly nutrient-dense source. So really those two combined, that's kind of like, that's, that's your multivitamin for the day. Then we've got the mackerel. What would that be replacing? That's essentially your omega-3 supplement. You can have a teaspoon of omega-3 oil, or you can just have a fillet of mackerel smoked, that's three and a half grams of omega-3s right there. Super simple. That's been my thought process really, not necessarily overanalyzing food, but just trying to prioritize nutrient dense, especially animal sources of food because they're the most bioavailable. They don't come with phytates, antinutrients, oxalates, all that other stuff. Having that more focused, um, actually being quite significantly higher than I was beforehand with protein, um, I definitely felt the best I've felt and you know my aura ring stats back that up, my blood test I've been taking have back that up and I haven't been ill apart from once when I was traveling back from the US March 2020 when all the coronavirus stuff kind of kicked off um, I was ill for a day and my girlfriend had coronavirus like symptoms for about two weeks after that point so pretty sure it might have been the dreaded virus this is just anecdotal um, there's definitely some evidence to back obviously some of the things I'm saying up but my experience is the anecdotal part of that is certainly worth considering if it's sort of hammering like 10, 12 different supplements every single day. All you need is coffee and oysters. I also forgot that, you know, I was outside and then the sunlight, sunlight, vitamin D, not this time of year, unfortunately in the UK, um, but like in summer, you can build up vitamin D stores because the amount of vitamin D you get from midday sun exposure is surprising. Uh, and then that should last you over winter if you're outside a lot. If you're not outside a lot, probably vitamin D is one of the few supplements that very worthwhile taking. Especially if it's relation to COVID, there's actually just a bunch of risk mitigation there. Um, I'll link to a paper on that down below. But yeah, as I'm sure those of you who want to comment will probably have commented already and are giving me your opinion on this, but I would love to hear it. Um, I like to think of myself as relatively well read when it comes to nutrition, but I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a nutritional expert. I'm pretty open to ideas. So yeah, let me know in the, in the comments down below. And if the excuse is go vegan, then I may skim past that comment because we've been over this one, guys. Oh. 
All right, so uh, it's almost five now. I've started doing some training. I've got an upper body session to do. And the past couple of videos, I've shared my other upper body session, which is focused around 90 degree push up. The second session was focused around planche. As you know, that's my main goals for 2021, is to get back into some real heavy strength stuff after a couple of years of handstands. Although, uh, it's, it's kind of been a spanner thrown in the works. And that is, uh, I'm a little bit injured again. So, I don't know if you remembered that at the end of November, I had a subluxation of my shoulder. I was doing a, a meat hook, and as I was lowering, like I just felt my shoulder basically come out partially in the socket. Pop back in, no problem. Some pain, some issues, rehabbed through for about a month. That took me to the end of December. Started getting back into some form of training, and I've kind of progressively built up to get back into some more intense strength work for the beginning of February. We're now one week into February, and this kind of niggle is popped back up again. So I want to nip this in the bud. Probably a good thing to do if you do have any sort of niggles is to address them first, because it does happen in training, let's be honest. You know, if you're pushing your body, you're going to get some aches and pains and some niggles here, but be careful to, to pay attention to the ones that persist and make sure you address them early. You've got many, many years in which to achieve future goals. It only takes a few months to take a step back rehab, make sure things, make sure that base is solid to build your pyramid on. Weirdly enough, I'm not that annoyed. I'm only one week into this program, so you know, I can just park it to the side, focus on my rehab, integrated stuff, and then come back to it maybe when I'm more prepared and in a better position in like three to six months time. Um, but I mean, that being said, obviously, it's annoying. I'm not gonna go into massive detail about the injury here because I'm still figuring out what exactly the root issue is myself because I said this has only happened the past few days to me. But that being said, essentially I'm gonna modify my training. I've got the moves that I know I can't do that cause more pain and cause more irritation. I've got the moves that are fine, like handstands doesn't even bother it. If anything, it feels better afterwards. And then somewhere in the middle is probably where my rehab is gonna be. But essentially it's just gonna be strength training that's modified to focus on Aggressively loading the injury to get stronger and fixing weak points. It's kind of all good rehab is, but anyway, on to the session. I am not liking the look of this cloud. Um, in my uh, recent home gym, I kind of talked about this home setup and the fact that I don't like training inside, regardless of the weather. So if it starts raining, just an extra challenge. <laughs> uh, but fingers crossed we get things done before that point. That may look like a weird one, but it's just um, the kind of basic thing when getting back into training with injuries is you do isometrics in positions related to the injured part. So for here, I get probably the most amount of pain when I lift into like a rear delt fly at the moment. Not quite sure why that is. Um, so all I'm doing here is I'm just doing 30 to 40 seconds isometrics, like moderate intensity, I don't really feel any pain. Isometrics don't cause much muscle damage or anything, but it's just about getting that area to fire and work. Blood flow, blow blah, get stronger. Um, so I'm using dumbbells that I can't lift and just pressing against them and focusing on how my position feels, making sure that shoulder blade feels like it's in the right position. Yeah. 
you have your tricep work, ignore, ignore the mess, by the way. <sighs> So this is where the supplements come into play. In here, two scoops of whey protein, beer creatine, and honey, basically. Also experimenting with some ashwagandha at the moment, which I used to take, just seeing if it has any effect. That's really like the only supplements that I'm kind of taking. The main reason for it is just, it's just easy, it's simple, and it's cheap. You know, that's 60 grams of protein right there. The equivalent would be, what, 50 grams? The equivalent would be like a 250 gram, an eight ounce steak which is gonna cost way more, and it's just kind of easier to have a shake. It's not the best, but it's it's not bad either. It's just, it's just simple, man. <laughs> Sometimes life needs to be simple. <sighs> my uh, my hand was literally shaking, holding the camera in front of me, like, cause that's kind of planche-ish position. Just the, the fatigue, man. Um, and yeah, pretty solid end to the session. Uh, I wouldn't usually train like handstands or flexibility in the rain, cause it's just off-putting, but if you need to power through a strength session, cold and wet, it's not the end of the world. And if anything, it's kind of enjoyable. It's not something you do very often, just like embracing nature in, in, in the least hippie sense. But that's basically it for this week, guys. A mixture of stuff today. Doing the same thing as I'm sure everyone is in the UK anyway, being stuck in lockdown. It's Groundhog Day. Every day is the same. I'm at home training, doing a little bit of work tidying up this mess as always guys i'd love to hear your two cents on the whole like supplements versus real food where do you sit on things do you take supplements because they're a little bit easier a little bit more convenient are you only about the whole foods let me know in the uh, comment section down below if you just enjoy this video you can hit that thumbs up button and support the channel right next to it is that subscribe button if you want to join the bodyweight or a child and don't miss out on any more future videos but that has basically been it for this week guys Catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and 